Two birds, how are we all? So we're back with Rascal. Um, he's, he's up to talking about first going, not not so much to, oh well, yeah, I guess to like juvenile prison, like the first yards when you're fresh, fresh in there in a big hall. Um, How he just wanted to be known, just wanted everybody to know who he was. He, he wanted to run the ball up for everybody. Just, and that's what happened. When you got no family and no support outside, you look, you know, you search so badly for family. Even though inside you don't feel like that, you just feel like that's who you are. You've just been conditioned that way and you've just been trained that way, you know. But I don't really want to cut into his chats too much. I'd rather let you just listen to his, his story and let, let him do it. But please drop some um, super likes down there. All, all funds go to Rascal and his story. So if you enjoy his stories, please support him um, and support the channel by sharing, liking and subscribing and become a member. Can't see my muscles, but anyway, enjoy the chat. Oh, you will not be charged for this call. To accept this call, say or dial five now. Thank you for using Global Tel Link. Yeah. Tommy, yeah. So, so you got out? When I got out. Yeah. Yeah, so when I... Yeah, yeah, so I got out of Hawaii, but like, like now I'm, I'm like, why banged out now, right? Like, like I'm not tolerating nothing. I'm like, I'm head tripping on everybody, right? Head tripping is like, um, I see anybody walking down the street, I'm running up on them with a gun, like, what's up, where you from? You know? Yeah. Like, I'm tripping on every, I'm even tripping on my own old boys. Yeah. I'm tripping on my own old boys because I just got out of YA, you know, and like, I think I'm the shit. Yeah. And I know, I know, like, I'm the shit, you yeah. know? Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, like, everybody, everybody, yeah, everybody was like, 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 just in fear. Everybody was tripping. Everybody was in fear. Nobody wanted to be like be around me. Everybody started like um like like trying to stay away from me because I was doing too much. And then like like my reputation, it would like follow me wherever I go. Right? So like it was so bad that sometimes and even out even when I was out seventeen years ago, I was still tripping. And it was like but it all began after that day. Like it would be so bad where I walk down the street and I know my homeboys are in this house, but they would shut off the lights and be like, no, nah, no, nah, here comes Rascal, here comes Rascal, and shut the lights off because they knew I was going to start tripping. Yeah. So I, was, so, I, so I was just usually, I was just like, always like the one that was um, going, gang banging, like, um, I've been, my, my road dog was my homeboy, Clever, that was my boy right there. As yeah. soon as I got out of YA, I never met him before, but when I got out of YA, I met him. And from that moment, me and him were like inseparable. Unse me and him were like, like just boys. Every day we, we lived at the same house. We wore the same clothes. And this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. And, and, and me and him would always go gangbanging together. Every day, me and him, we had a 30 odd 6 which is a gear rifle. And we, yeah. it, we had a we had a gear rifle with some big ass. It, 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 they were like, they were like uh, two two threes, like which is for like um, which is like for like an M15. But they fit in this this gear rifle, so we would walk around with that, and it was sawed off. We had the we had the bush shot off, and we had the barrel shot off, and we would mob around trying to find somebody, you know. And we, just, we were just nuts, and we would go, we get it, we steal cars, we go fucking look for enemies, and we dump. And that's just us. We, everybody knew, hey, Rascal and Trevor, like, them fools are, they're nuts. Right? So, <clears throat> I ended up, I ended up getting busted again, maybe like, uh, maybe like four months after that, right, for, um, assault, assault on a hula, or assault on a cop. Right? I, I right. assaulted a cop when he was trying to make a stop, when he was trying to make a stop with me, and, like, he was trying to, like, well, cause over here in America, when they when they stop you, they pull you out the car, tell you to like put your hands on the roof of the car, and then they start patting you down all fast and hard. Well, he's right. patting me down, and I have a gun on me. I try to break. He grabs my arm, and I come around with the other hand and crack him in the head and take off running. Right, so he throws he throws his big ass mag light at me, and I take off running. And um, I run through the alley. I run to my old boy Wicked's house. And I try to stick there, but Wicked's like, hey, leave, leave, the cops are coming, you know? So I tried to go, I tried to go uh, across the street to my homeboy Plumpy, and they caught me. And when they caught me, 
the cops like put me down. They were like, "Look, man, you move, we're gonna kill you." Blah blah blah. So I ended up going back to jail, and I got I got like uh, I think it was like a year flat. That's it. That time. Oh yeah. And when I got out, when I got out this time, I was 18 years old. Yeah, and now. And you went now, to real jail then. And now. You went to proper jail? Yes. Oh, yeah. yes, I went to an adult jail, yes. Yeah. Yes, now I'm 18, I'm an adult now. Yeah. You know, but I'm still like living like I'm like a little kid. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not caring about nothing, nothing. So I go, I go to like, I go to uh, the county jail for the first time and they have me like in the barracks. The barracks is like a, where it's just like a whole bunch of bunk beds and it's for like low level people. Yeah. Like right? people that haven't been around. You know, and, and like, most people, they get busted, you know, and they try to kick on back. Me, I'm trying to get in the mix already. Like, I like I have a goal in my life, and my goal is to be Emmett because I watched I watched the movie before, and I want to be that person now. Yeah. You know, so, like, I'm trying to learn everything. I'm trying to, like, I'm volunteering for everything. Everything that comes up, this fool needs to get uh, beat up for, uh, he, he fucked up somehow, he needs to get tagged. Okay, well, I'll beat him up, you know? Yeah. So I'm, I'm putting in for everything, and I'm getting my name heard. So and, and now, my name is starting to, like, oh, yeah, the homie Rascal Rascal, he's a good dude. He's a good, he's a good homie. And they start giving me, like, little, um, like, little jobs. Like, I said the guile, and which a guile for us is, like, um, it's good morning. Like, we'd be, like, it'd be, like, Sureño, uh, Irasa. Buenos dias, and then everybody will be like, Buenos dias, de gracias a ti, and then I'll say good night too, right? So I had that little job oh, yeah. for a little bit, and then from there, yeah. So, but this is only like in the barracks, you know, yeah. this is nothing. You know, no one's been to prison before, but I'm just doing this just to like, so my name starts going around. Yeah. So I end up getting out. I end up getting out, and um, about maybe like, I think it's like, Maybe it was like seven months after I'm 18, I get up, I get out, I go to a, a, a city called Riverside to where my grandparents live. So now I'm 18, I don't have to go back to like group homes anymore. So I try to go with my grandparents. And when I'm there, like, like an idiot, you know what I'm saying? Like somebody that's doing too much, I start slanging dope out of my house, right? And like, I know cops are paying attention because they're parked right at my, the end of the, into the room, but I'm not caring. I have people coming over at all types of the day, you know, like I'm, yeah. I have homeboys over all the time and, and well, they, they got fed up with that and I've been, I've been doing this for like four months, you know, four months and then the SWAT team hit my house and I was in the middle of ironing when the SWAT team hit my house, like they threw in a flash grenade, I tried to jump out the back window and they grabbed me and they, you mean they got me and I went back to jail. So this has been my life nonstop. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like since I was since I became from since I became from Baker Street all together, I've been out on the street about a year. Well everything else has been spent in prison. Yeah. About twenty eight years of my life has been in here. And for that for the last seventeen I've been busted right now. But so I like I just did like maybe like they didn't find no drugs on me that time. And they let me out about maybe like three months after that. I was I was out for like um I, I did one more prison term. I did one more prison term, and that was for uh, a gun. I did one more prison term, and that was for a gun. And I when I I did like three years for that. I got out when I was twenty four years old, no twenty three years old. And when I was out, I was out for um for three months. I was out for three months, and I caught. The crime I'm in right now, right now, this minute. Yeah. And, um, I'll tell you guys about my, like, what I'm busted for and everything right now. But that's just like the short, short of my life. You know, like, I've been in and out of prison my whole life. And this is just like what I've known. I've known nothing else but this. I've never even wanted to know anything else but this. Yeah. I never cared about, like, um, like, I've never cared about, like, being out there, raising a family. You know, I've never cared about, like... Getting a like, job or um, nothing like that. The, 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 yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, just being the straight and narrow, I never cared yeah. about that. My life has always been this, you know? 
But I could honestly say one thing, you know, like, um, I think prison has saved me. Because I think if I was on the street, I'd be dead. Yeah. You know, the, the way I was going, I would have died. Because, like, remember my homeboy Clever that I told you about my road dog? Yeah. After I got busted, after I got busted, he got killed. Oh, yeah. Like, he was at a, he was at a Walgreens with my homeboy Sapo, and they were with some girls. And some folks from Torperstown rolled up and seen my homeboy Clever waiting outside. So they go and they pick up maybe like 15 of them. They come back and my homeboy Clever's outside and they jump out the car and they ask them where they're from. Well, this fool also knows him and he goes, well, that's Clever from Baker Street. So my homeboy Clever, he's a G. He, and like, instead of seeing that, hey, these fools have a uh, uh, knife and there's 15 of them, I can't beat them. My homeboy Clever tries to fight them. He doesn't run or nothing. He tried yeah. to fight him. And they stabbed him. Right? And they stabbed him. To, they stabbed him to death. And my old boy, um, Sapo, he left them. He left them. And even, like, to this day, Sapo's wanted in my hood for leaving Clever. And he came back to pick him up after they, they both left. And my old boy Clever died in the car trying to take him to the hospital. But that, that like, so I'm saying, he was living the same life as me. And this is what happens, like, to all my old boys. If you're in Baker, like we're not a we're not a big neighborhood, but you know, I mean we, we hate everybody, we get along with nobody. Yeah. You know, so I'm thinking like prison honestly saved me. Yeah, for sure. All right. But because yeah, because because a, a lot of people that are in prison, you know, they're bitter, they're angry. But like one thing that I learned while being in prison and, and it's like I gotta take the time like like, a lot of people who are incarcerated and take the advantage of that, you know, and yeah. just have hope. You know, people that, like, in prison, they, like, they do not have any type of hope, you yeah. know. And, and the hope that I received, you know, I used to be like that, you know, but the hope that I received, it came through my wife. You know, it wasn't until I met her. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Yeah. It wasn't until I met Pamela it was when I was just, like, like, this isn't for me no more. Yeah, you know, and even the cops yeah. like, why not right now? Like the cops, like the sergeant, they've been fucking with me nonstop. Like they, they, they cannot believe that just in November, I gave everything up for my wife. Yeah, you know, and I tell the sergeant, I was like, look, man, he's like, I, you, you have twenty two stabbings on your record, and you're gonna tell me that all of a sudden you don't want to do that no more? And I was like, yeah, that's exactly what I'm telling you. You know, so they don't want to believe it, but I'm telling you right now, like, like I'm done with that life, and, and, and it's just not the life for me anymore. Yeah. Like, um, like I'm really, um, I'll tell you guys about about the the day I got uh I got busted, right? Um, but like I'll do it next time. I'll do yeah. It next time yeah. Do it next time. Kinda, yeah. It's like a it's like a nice long. Yeah. It's like a nice long uh crazy little story but it was in the newspaper it was uh all over the internet you know like um yeah it, it was a crazy it was like that it was like a shootout at the OK corral it was nuts yeah like that's it though really like i just huh you just went off i was anything yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, like, like, um, I don't know, homie, it was just, it was just, like, I didn't care about nothing before, yeah. uh, like, it's crazy, I don't even know how to really, like, explain it, homie, like, the whole time, my whole, my whole, like, um, goal in life was to become something, Yeah. and I did become something, right, yeah. and, 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 and I was, I was, like, that person, homie, I was, like, number two, you know, yeah. and I gave it all up. I gave it all up in November because um, my wife, we had like a long talk, you know, and I knew I was in love. I've never been in love my whole time, my whole, ever, ever, my, matter of fact, I, I've never been in love, not one time. I do not know how to, I never treated women right, you know, and like, like, but once I met this woman, it was just like, wow, you know, and we had a talk because I go, I go home in 2040 right now. Yeah. Right. But like, um, we had a big old talk and like my family was like, look, man, I'm willing to help you out with the lawyer. Are you done with that life? And I told them, yeah, I'm done with that life. So my sister, my brother 
and like everybody's trying to get money together because we found a lawyer that said that all kinds of new enhancement laws that popped up that they that they qualify for me. Right? Oh so yeah, man. That's what like the little you have sixty seconds remaining. That's what the talk was about and like basically like my wife's like, Look man, it's either me or them. Yeah. Right? And I'm not gonna lose her for anything. Yeah, so I wow. called them all up to the table and I told them. But you know, it's blood and blood out. It's blood and blood out. Yeah. You know, so I knew what was gonna happen. I knew yeah. I knew what was gonna happen. Like I've been stabbed before, you know, and I'll talk about that. I've been stabbed three different times so far since I've been in prison. You know? Yeah. I've been um I, I've been beat up. I've been beat up by the cops. Like but like um just stay tuned in and like I got a lot more to talk about it. You know, I just appreciate everybody that, like, like, listens to me, you know? Yeah, nah, mad, mad legend, brother. Appreciate it heaps. And, there's, yeah, there's way more to come. He's only at the start of his story. Like, we're only getting to when he gets to jail now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, jail, like, that's, that's been my whole life, you know? Yeah. Like, I got story after story to tell you. Yeah, awesome. Oh, yeah, sweet. All right, guys. <clears throat> so that was Rascal. Like, wow. Fuck, his story's intense, eh? Hey? Look at, you know how many stabbings he's done? Um, just, like, you know, when you're in Australia and you're like, yeah, I'm about that life or whatever. Like, you're really not about that life. Like, fucking no one, no one walks around in front of fucking anyone and stuff, you know. These guys will shoot at police if they come in the street. Um, it's like a little Mexico over there. And that's how crazy Americans get by, you know. It's, um, especially when they're facing them big, like, big sentences. They've got a lot to lose. Just getting pinched on the street. You're getting 10 years. You're getting 20. Look, fucking just the little things, you know? So when they're risking that, even then when he had the gun, he had to run from the cop. You know, they got him. They got even 12 months, whatever, for punching the cop. But, you know, I think he, he got rid of the gun or whatever. Getting done with the gun as a um, parolee or whatever, probably get five years. So, you know, you have a lot to lose. And then and then what happens next? Because you're in the heat of the moment. Um, If he's still got the gun on him, does he start shooting at him? Maybe shoot a cop, do life. Like, that's how things can escalate so quickly because of what they're facing and the bigger sentences. And in Australia, when they're trying to say, oh, I'll give us bigger sentences, you learn before you do things, you don't think you're getting a bigger sentence. But if you're facing that big sentence, it makes you more, more fucking wild. You know what I mean? Like, more wild, like when a cop's in front of you to, um, you know, like imagine the police chases we'd have on, imagine the shootouts we'd have on, people trying not to get fucking pinched because of the the repercussions that, and they're already, you know, knowing that they're going in for a big one. Anyway, guys, that's Rascal. Make sure you support him. Um, Put his links in the thing. I'm, uh, I hope you've um, enjoyed the video. His story's just getting, like his story actually goes like this, like fucking bang, you know, all the way up to the Serenos and like MA, like the Mexican Mafia and stuff like that. So stay tuned. He's a fucking hectic one, fucking 100% real one. Gonna get the paperwork, fucking put the paperwork on here too. And, um, any questions? If people have questions, you just can drop them in the, in the comments and I'll, um, write them down and I can ask them to him. But first we'll, we'll get through his life. Um, and he's also built his own channels so that, that he can start to get his own following because someone like him, he definitely knows the headspace people have been in. You know, he's like fucking, you know, Debo in Friday when Debo rocks up to town. Um, like he was saying back in the video, it's like fucking Debo, bro. Debo's here. Fucking shut the... That's your own friends, you know? And that that's what happens when you're a fucking crazy one. All right, anyway, you can go now.